Welcome students, teachers, parents, friends. You are watching this because you are gonna be competing in the Junior Duck Stamp. We are here, sunny Sanibel Island, Florida, the home of the Federal Duck Stamp. And today we're gonna to teach you about how it all got started and what you're gonna be doing. So, how did this whole thing get started? Jay Norwood Ding Darling. This guy right here. He was an editorial cartoonist from the Des Moines Register. He spent his career educating the public about politics and conservation through his cartoons. He lived at a time where there was no TV. People got their information from the newspapers. Besides drawing cartoons, Ding Darling took action. He was a sportsman and he drew and created the first federal duck stamp. So what is a duck stamp? First and foremost, duck stamps are pieces of art, but they help conservation. 98 cents on every dollar with the purchase of a duck stamp goes back to buying land. What a great thing he created. Over a billion dollars have gone to purchasing 6 million acres across the National Wildlife Refuge System. And even today, when you buy a duck stamp, it gets you in for free entrance to a National Wildlife Refuge, but even better, we're still buying land. And from the federal duck stamp, the junior duck stamp was born. Started right here in the 1980s, now it's across the country. All U.S. states and territories compete. Kindergarten through seniors compete in this contest. Not only can you win with your beautiful artwork, you can also win with a conservation message. One or two lines about what you've learned about the importance of wetlands and our amazing wildlife. And here to help us draw a duck is our 2022 through 23 artist in residence, Jackie Roche. So as a special treat, we have our special guest, my artist assistant, Puddles the Blue Goose, is going to show you how easy it is to actually draw a duck. Hi, Puddles. For your piece, make sure that you use a nine inch by 12 inch piece of paper and a horizontal layout. And please remember, no borders or matting. If you happen to use chalk or pastels though, you can use a piece of paper as a cover just to help with the shipping, but don't attach anything. So the first thing we're gonna do, Puddles, is we're gonna start with our basic shapes. We're looking for things like an oval for his head. And notice that I'm drawing very lightly. This is called sketching. You don't want to draw it dark yet because you haven't decided if it's the best drawing you've done. Now we're going to add some more shapes like a triangle for his beak. I see an eye, so that's kind of like a circle. And there's another circle inside there. His neck is kind of like a square, right? Good job, Puddles. Now I'm going to look at his body. He's got a big body. Can you make an oval puddle? Good. Now his wing can be a little tricky because his wing is two shapes. Rectangle, then a little bit of a triangle. It's pretty good to get started. Is this a wetland? Is this a wetland? What about this? Wetlands are crucial. They recharge groundwater, remove pollutants, and they provide critical habitat for many species, lots of which are endangered. This even includes millions of migratory birds and waterfowl. Perfect. That looks great, Puddles. So here comes the fun part. Now we're going to start paying attention and we're looking again at details. What makes this duck different from other ducks? I'm looking to see what shape is his eye. Is it more of a circle? Does he have another color around it? Does he have anything interesting going on as his head? Maybe like some back feathers? I see something coming down there on the back. Remember to pay really close attention to the field marks of your waterfowl. We have a lot of great resources. You could use wooden sculptures, you could use taxidermied mounts. We have field guides, or the internet's a really great resource too. A couple topography words to keep in mind for your waterfowl is the words like crown, nape, breast, vent, wings, just anything that makes your waterfowl unique. So now's where you wanna pay really close attention to his details. What are his markings? How does he stand out when he's out in the wild? So we're gonna make a nice organic shape to make that wing look more like a wing. Add some tail feathers. He's got one, two that I can see from here and a nice long one for his tail. Looks good, Puddles. Have you done this before? So now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna darken him up a little bit. Remember before I was sketching, now he's looking better. And then the best part, we get to add some color. Is he a blue duck? Is he green? And that's the fun part. So we're gonna take our colors and I'm gonna start with, um, I think I'm gonna do some blue around him to make it look like the water's there. I see that he's got a beautiful red beak. And I'm doing that lightly too, because I can always get darker, right? I can always change the colors later. He's got a red eye. He looks like a brown duck, right? But that's not just brown. He's got 
some green on his head. He's got a little bit of green on his beak. I need some brown, which I don't have. Hey, I heard you need some brown. Thanks, Ranger Katie. You're welcome. Here we go, Puddles. 